Sophie was released from prison three years ago. Uh, the last time I was here in this space, I was being brought through as a, a new prisoner to this prison, um, just been removed from SEND. What I got convicted for was setting fire to some bins. I got three sentences in total, six year, five year and four year trunk and current, as there were three instances of fire setting. So yeah, there's many factors that led to my offending behaviour. I was a care for my mum from the age of 11, she had MS. She unfortunately died when I was 18. I'd also been abused for three years from the age of 11 to 14, which I'd never dealt with and never spoke about with anyone. Um, being gay in a small town with no other gay people, to kind of hide all this hurt that I'd been through, I took cocaine and I drank a lot of booze and I was living a life that wasn't really right for me, but, you know, it hid the hurt. And all this led to me getting arrested for silly little things like petty crime, such stuff as getting drunk in the street and criminal damage, putting magnets on cars, stuff that was actually quite minor and quite funny at the time. But because I had a record, this slowly built up and became a bad character reference until the point of everything that had happened in my life just resulted in me setting fire to bins just to try and get this pain out. I don't know whether I was likening the flames to my anger or what, but it was definitely some cry for help or something along those lines. And it was very isolating being in prison, so I spent a lot of time locked up because I was on basics, I was behind my door uh, for hours, 23 hours a day, and all I could do was pick my life apart and relive all the bad events, which led to me self-harming. I mean, I'm absolutely covered in scars. It's easier to turn emotional pain into physical pain because you can fix that. You know, I, I couldn't fix the stuff in my head, I couldn't get the counselling that I needed, but I could self-harm and then patch myself up, stick a plaster on it. After months of destructive behaviour in different prisons, Sophie began to make changes when she started the sycamore tree course. Doing the sycamore tree, it just brought about like a sense of calm. Hello. <laughs> well, who'd have thought that we'd see you again after all this time? You were accepted in October 2008 and you completed it in October, November mm. 2008. So we're going back, you know, five and a half five years. Five and a bit years, yeah. And that you haven't been tempted to re-offend or... And you've, no. got, uh, you've got a hold on your, your drug problems. Yep. And I think really doing this course allowed me to work outside from prison as well. The sycamore tree was a catalyst for me actually being like, you know what, yeah, I did mess up, but everyone messes up and, you know, you've mm. got to try and forgive yourself for what you've done, even if other people won't. From my own experiences, obviously being in prison and being an ex-drug user, I now work with people with drug and alcohol issues and mental health issues as my proper job. Oh, that, that's absolutely wonderful to hear that yeah. story. And I say that there would be many people out there who would be really pleased to hear how things have gone. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Mm. The impact of the Sycamore Tree was for me, um, A, forgiving myself for what I'd done, B, forgiving the people who had done stuff to me growing up. And also the, the third and final thing was that it taught me to accept that people don't have to forgive you for you to move on. My victims have the right to be angry with me. They have the right to not forgive me and I can't hold that against them, but I have the right to forgive myself in order for me to move on. And if you can forgive yourself for what you've done to other people, it's a lot easier to forgive other people for what they've done to you. And that was a really defining moment in my life because of the sycamore tree. Most of the women I would describe as having been victims themselves in some form or other. Many of them are, are victims of uh, having been in care. Um, they go on to make relationships which can be abusive. And so domestic violence is, is a huge issue. They also come as primary carers. And so there are you know, devastating issues really for them about the loss of their children and having to put them into the care of other people. Um, and then there are the, the, sort of the, the ones who lose their children altogether through compulsory adoptions. So there's a lot of pain that the women bring into the prison with them. And 
um, because sycamore tree has an emphasis on victim awareness, we have to always bear in mind that many of these women have also been victims of, of crime of one sort or another. Following a sustained period of good behaviour, Sophie was moved to an open wing of the prison in preparation for her release. This is D wing, this is the open wing when I was here and it's where I went to work every single day and where I also took my weekend leaves from. So I'd go home once a month for five days, see my family and work outside pretty much every single day of the week. I couldn't actually believe that I'd got that far through my sentence that they actually now trusted me to go outside every single day and not do anything stupid, so I was quite proud of myself. Whilst on Ruttle, Sophie worked for the Kersler Trust, helping to curate an art exhibition by women prisoners shown on the South Bank. Kersler was just the next stepping stone for me, really, to get into where I wanted to be. It taught me my social skills again and gave me back my confidence talking to a range of people rather than just prisoners, which is what I've been, you know, is who I'd been living with for the last two years, and it's all I knew. What do you think of this one? I quite like it. I think it's called He in the Fractured Self. Like all the different colours could represent the emotions that mm. she feels, and obviously it's all just put together as a mosaic to suggest that maybe everything isn't all one in her head. Oh, she's coming together kind of thing. Yeah. This one's very different. That's quite cool. Let's hold it the right way up. What's this one called? Rebuilding begins with forgiveness. Oh, I see. So it's all the words. All the words broken down. Broken in. That's really clever. That is very clever. So Sophie came on board the curating project we did in 2009. She was one of a group of women prisoners from Downview that got rottled to come and work at the Kersler Arts Centre to select work for the exhibition. Um, so I met Sophie for the first time at Downview, didn't I, where you interviewed for a space on the project. Um, and you're quite a different character than <laughs> what you are now, um, but very, always very um, articulate clearly very intelligent, um, but there were issues and things still going on for you, I think, at the time. And I think you tested them and you tested yourself and you tested us, but you <laughs> kind of triumphed, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, you certainly went on the biggest journey, I think, of all of the women on the project. Oh, thank you. If I hadn't have done the um, sycamore tree, then chances are I would probably still be living the lifestyle I was e living before, which would have resulted in me either having an even bigger drug addiction to some other drug, or being dead somewhere. I really calmed down and really looked at my future and making progression and started making contacts, working with young offenders and the Met Police, talking to kids in school about the impacts of crime and prison, really. And then from that, it led to me doing the sort of work that I'm doing now, advising the government, um, talking on international stages with Hollywood actresses and singers and MPs and dames and baronesses and princesses and yeah. So it's, it's kind of, from the sycamore tree, it's led to many bigger things. And without the sycamore tree, I wouldn't have the confidence or the peace within myself to be able to do what I do.